What's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is Earthmaster here checking in on this Sunday morning, uh, December 27th, 2020, 940 a.m. West Coast time. And uh, take a look at the Earthquake 3D globe. Shows continued activity in the Puerto Rico area, 3.7, the latest quake on the globe. Uh, I was kind of woken up this morning by an earthquake here in Northern California within my vicinity of where I uh, live. I'm going to go ahead and bring up this other map here and show you guys the earthquake in question here. It's a, uh, this little guy right here, not a big earthquake. This was originally a 3.9 magnitude quake here, downgraded to a 3.8, and then uh, shortly followed up uh, by a, a little 2.5. The depth of these earthquakes here, pretty deep for this area of California. These are not uh, surface faults at all. Um, we don't really have any specific fault systems out here uh, in this area of the valley, but the, the depth, 24 kilometers below the surface for uh, the 3.8, and then the uh, other one was 19 kilometers. So something major going on out there, uh, movement along the North American plate. And I believe that's a continued sign of uh, some major increased activity. And you guys can see that here on this map, specifically the activity on the North American side. We're not seeing a whole lot of movement along the Pacific boundary, but... Uh, that's weird. My dog barked. He hardly ever barks. Um, so yeah, all this activity in the Nevada down here, there's a little uh, oddball quake too, north of the Garlock Fault, um, also around the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, some some fault systems there at the surface showing movement. Uh, just an overall general um, view of this shows that there's a lot of stress out there right now, I believe, along the plate boundaries here. Uh, or along this specific plate boundary, which is known as the San Andreas Fault. Uh, just a whole lot of movement. That's that's uh, that's a given. And to see this deeper movement up here in the Sacramento Valley, I live within this region up here. Uh, so it shook me up pretty good, folks. Uh, I was sleeping about 6.44 a.m. Um, I, I was sleeping pretty good, actually. No dogs barking. Uh, and then I felt something jump on my bed like a jolt on my bed so i was like oh man how the heck did my dog get in because sometimes i'll leave him inside the house but i keep my door shut so he doesn't come and you know snuggle up with me in the middle of the night because I, I can't sleep with animals but um so yeah i felt something jump on my bed and i was like what the heck so i got up and i looked my door is still shut there's nothing there's nothing at all in my room no one no dogs no animals i thought man maybe it's a ghost so I let my dog out real quick because uh, he was woken up too. Um, as soon as he heard me get up, he got up. So I let him outside, went and used the bathroom real quick and uh, looked at my earthquake app and seen this 3.9 here that struck next to me. I was like, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, it was a pretty good jolt. It just literally felt like someone, you know, kind of like a dog or cat jumped on the bed just real quick. That was it. I uh, didn't knock anything down, but it, uh, like I said, it woke me up because I was sleeping. There's the uh, Did You Feel It reports. Areas uh, north of Miguelia, up by Paradise, down to uh, Sacramento as well, feeling that earthquake. And uh, the epicenter, roughly out here along the, uh, I'll show you guys where it's at, along the Sacramento River up here, just off of it. Like I said, about, uh, oh, about 10 miles east, southeast of Willows. There's Sacramento River right here. Here's these uh, two little earthquakes that struck this morning. We don't have any fracking operations out here. I mean, sometimes we do get, uh, sometimes there are, uh, I'm trying to think what they are, some type of oil pumping things. We see them, they're like mobile. They bounce around every once in a while, but I haven't seen them in a couple years. But when we did have those, I, I remember seeing a couple small surface quakes popping up like a month after they get through with the operation here along uh, 162 here. But these quakes are not anything related to um, fracking or any type of oil uh, injection. There is the Sutter Buttes down here, which is a long extent, extinct volcano. Uh, beautiful area when it's green. In the summertime, it's hot and dry and rattlesnakes all around here. Yeah, this is uh, used to be a very active volcano, but it's been very... Very quiet, no earthquake activity, anything. Plus, it sits about uh, 15 miles from this area. So I'm definitely ruling that out. No association with this at all. Um, and these quakes up here are separate on their own. 
due to plate, te uh, plate, plate tectonic stress at the moment here uh, along the west coast, especially with the depth of those quakes there. Um, looking at the tremor map real quick, I know I didn't do an update last night. I uh, wasn't feeling too good. I had to listen to dogs bark all day. Uh, not my dogs, but the neighbor's dogs. Uh, at least from last night, some movement along the Cascadia subduction zone um, down in southern Oregon. Not a whole lot of activity in, in northern California, but I'm going to be surprised. Well, no, I shouldn't say I, I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't doubt it if we see some tremor down here into this area of northern California, right at the southern end, the very southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, the Juan de Fuca plate that subducts underneath the North American plate here. This is the area, you can't see it on the map, um, but the plate itself, you know, is, is, is the Cascadia subduction zone, the locked area out here. It's that little uh, separate plate that uh, you know, will soon to be disappearing, you know, in millions of years, who knows, uh, underneath the North American plate completely. But for now, um, it does extend down here into the south, right around, just right around this area where we've seen uh, the earthquake activity this morning so I'm kind of curious to see if we will see some tremor being detected on the updated map uh, later this evening when they do update it for this specific area uh, so I will be checking back on that so yeah it was uh you know it's not a big quake folks but it's it's uh it's the first one I felt uh in a couple years I did feel this five point oh man what was that five point four that struck to the west over here on this specific fault system, I believe it was. It was north of Clear Lake. Um, I believe it was this one right here. And you can see within this area, that's not that uh, uh, far of a distance there to where I live. So the 5.4 definitely felt a lot stronger um, and longer uh, than this 3.9, which was just a little jolt. Uh, very quick jolt and you can, in fact you can see on the waveforms let me see if I can pop up uh, these waveforms real quick oh man hold on a second here I believe this station you can see it here too waveforms here we go here we go so these are specific stations around the area. You can see how strongly it showed up, but it's just a, like I said, just a really quick jolt. The time frame of these uh, seismic little snapshots, if you will, uh, is the first arrival at zero seconds, right? That's gonna be when the earthquake was first detected, uh, 10 seconds after beginning of the plot. So 10 seconds extends here. If you look at any of these um, specific um, registers of the quake, it was just a very short one to two second jolt very quick uh, and then of course the further you get away uh, the potentially longer it's going to look like like it's drawn out but uh kind of the wavy lines right there but it was definitely a really quick jolt folks um i didn't feel the 2.5 the struck afterwards but uh you know keep an eye on it that's for dang sure some interesting activity going on here in my homeland uh, but yeah, check it out, folks. I mean, there's a whole bunch of movement out there along the North American plate. Uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire still very active as well. Not as much as we had seen, uh, oh, a couple days ago or so. Still some deep movement. Uh, Japan seen a pretty deep earthquake there. That's, uh, check out the depth of that, 532 kilometers for that little 4.6. So some deeper movement definitely taking place out there. And we've seen quite a bit of deep movement here in Fiji over the past, oh, I don't know, we can go seven days and check out the, uh, we'll just go to 4.5 and above, and you can see a significant amount of deep movement out here um, with the depths over here. See these earthquake uh, levels here, 520, 148, and so on, 485, 285, some major deep movement taking place um, over the last week within this region and also now up into uh, uh, just south of Japan. So something brewing, folks. There's definitely something brewing out here. North American Plate. Uh, I think West Coast folks should definitely be on alert today uh, with the amount of movement that's taking place inland into the North American side with hardly any activity along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, there is microquakes, right? There's always activity taking place, but it's been relatively quiet. You take a look at that. Even along the San Jacinto Fault area, uh, somewhat quiet compared to normal. 
There is some new activity out here. Uh, a couple of small microquakes um, in this area of California. No swarmings really to report. Salt and Sea not seen any type of uh, swarming. Ridgecrest unusually quiet, but some new activity north of the Garlock Fault here where this uh, cluster of quakes took place. 3.5 there. And uh, in fact, uh, Joshua Tree over here has seen a, a couple small earthquakes as well. Uh, I believe that was a couple days ago, so it's not on the 24 hour period of, uh, of the map there. Northern Cal, what do we got up here? Bucks Lake, Mount Lassen sit up, sits up here. No activity to report in that region. So, yeah, just on target here for the West Coast today, including my area. Um, I will do a little bit uh, more in-depth detail worldwide uh, earthquake activity, and we'll talk about uh, Kilauea Volcano and the solar weather potential uh, during the update video a little bit later this evening. Also, we'll check back in on the uh, trimmer department and see uh, what's going on there, if there's any type of movement taking place within my area, but downstream there of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. I did add a station along the Northern California coastline uh, around the Eureka area, uh, area of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's going to be the station right after Yellowstone here called uh, Petroy... Petro Petro Ooh, let me spit that out, right? I haven't had any caffeine. This station right here, Petroy, Petroy, I know how to say it, but I can't say it right now. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh goodness. Yeah, I need some caffeine. But being woken up by an earthquake at 644, uh, I was hoping to sleep in today. That's not going to happen. All right, folks. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Uh, be on guard. Also got Parkfield, California down there as well on the seismic, seismograph station. But uh, I guess we'll go ahead and keep that down there as well. Sometimes that thing disappears uh, when it's updating. I'm not for sure why if there's why there's a lapse in data when it comes in. But uh, uh, it does normally pop back up. So, all right, folks, have a good night or a good, good day, good morning. We'll be back a little bit later on this evening with a full update. Have a good one.